the idea of channeling a spirit and don't like the idea of out-of-body experiences or any of those kind of things. And so there is a lot of resistance to, to uh, people channeling things in Western face. But in Eastern face, there is very little resistance at all to channeling information from spirits. But they do have their own version of it, like speaking in tongues and... So it's like, and prophesying and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff, yes. And a lot of that wild dancing they do, you know, yeah, that's all where that, yeah. opening to spirit. And a lot of times they're connecting with spirits in very low condition, by the way, too. Ah. So, you know, if a person makes you fall around and flap around on the ground, <laughs> do you think he's a person who's really being nice to you? Like, <laughs> honestly, no. do you feel that? Like, no. So obviously that spirit who's connecting with that person isn't, isn't in as good development as what the person maybe is considering. What actually saying, because I've actually been involved in the Pentecostal church yep. myself, and yep. I've even spoken in tongues. And, yep. um, what they actually say with somebody falling on the ground is that it's the actual other demons coming out of the wild. So I realise that. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. No. Often it's the spirit influencing the person yeah. rather than coming out of the person. Yeah. And, and so the key, the key is to uh, allow... You know, if, you look at, if you look at all the times in the Bible that's been recorded that, that I expelled demons, the person started in a crazed condition and ended in a normal condition. Oh. Not the opposite way around. Mm. <laughs> right? So, so if you look at all forms of spirit possession and, and, ex, and expulsion, when the spirit is expo expelled, the person should be acting in a much more calm and reasonable manner, not the opposite way around. And if they don't have a shift when that demon is exercised, another one will enter. Exactly. If they don't have an emotional shift that caused the attraction, then another spirit will enter. Mm. Yeah. That's why I recommended yesterday to watch the movie, the Emily Rose movie. Yeah. Well, I've actually um, got a book some time ago called End Trauma Release and Exercises. Yep. And the philosophy along the line is that we trauma is stuck, is stuck into our body. Mm -hmm. Our natural reaction um, when we're in shock is physical shaking to, to release energy. Mm -hmm. Dogs, when they're excited, they'll physically shake. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that. Okay. I'm so talking about if a, per if a spirit causes you to flop around on the ground... What about uh, your... And then flop. next week you do the same thing, and then next week you do the same thing, and then next week you do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Then it's the same spirit connecting with you over and over again, doing the same thing to you. Right. You're not releasing an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in a state of shaking when you're feeling an emotion and crying and in a state mm. of shock, mm. well, you're releasing a causal emotion. Yeah, sure. That's a totally different yeah. experience. And this can happen to me. I can do it for 20, 25 minutes mm -hmm. non-stop in various parts vibrating. Yeah. And I personally strongly believe it's just stuff's coming up in my body. Totally. Natural reaction is to release that energy. Somehow. That's right. That's and then right. at the end of it, it's just like... Peace, <sighs> peace overcomes oh, you. Oh, it's just beautiful. That's it. Yeah. So that is the release of a causal, of causal fear. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's it, a totally different yeah. experience. Is it helpful? We do something in yoga qigong where we, we shake and jiggle. Yeah. To help simulate that state. Yeah, and no, it all of that is good. fine. It, yeah. I'm, what I'm talking about is when a person goes into this state where they're convulsing on the floor mm -hmm. and then the next week they do the same thing and the next week they do the same thing but there's no causal emotion being released. Yeah, sure. There's obviously a spirit influence. It's mm -hmm. obviously spirit possession uh, where the person is allowing that possession at that particular moment. And, and people do it because of the power it feels good within themselves to do it. Like when you met... I'm not even talking here about a six-sphere spirit. You imagine even a second-sphere spirit who, for most people, a second-sphere spirit has far more love than what most people on earth have. And a second-sphere spirit connects with you, you're going to feel that emotion. You're going to feel it. You'll feel it. And a lot of times, many of you even here now, feel tingling sensations through the back of your skull. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's a spirit connection. There's a spirit trying to communicate feelings and emotions and thoughts and pictures to you. And many of you, the questions you've asked haven't been your questions. They've actually been spirits who are here, their questions. Um, um, with Matthew, uh, the oneness being um, in Fiji when we went to the seven day um, uh, process, um, there was an enormous amount of laughter, like real belly laughing. Yep. Can you explain what was happening? Many, many of the people in the oneness movement have received divine love. 
And so what you're getting is a mixture of the natural love spirit and their divine love energy. The energy of the person, I mean, who's received divine love, a mixture of those two things. And, and this is where many of them would benefit a lot from knowing, you know, the complete thing of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because they'd be able to replicate that and continue to grow in that. What happens for many, like Gandhi, for instance, when he was on the earth, received divine love. Mm -hmm. And uh, he received divine love to a third sphere condition when he was on the earth, right? But he was in a very, very good natural love condition, being guided by natural love spirits, even though he personally had received divine love. And when he passed, he was instantly on the divine love path because of the divine love he'd received and his connection with God. And he's, but, but there were many beliefs that he had, which were natural love beliefs that he had to give up. But he gave them up, because he was a humble man, he gave them up very rapidly. And that's why he's now way, way up in the spheres of the spirit world. Okay. Far more developed than most, many of these people who think they're developed are. Gandhi is a much, much higher place. Now, so these, so many of the people in the oneness movement have received divine love. Many of you have received divine love, all right? And what I'm trying to do, I suppose, is to, see, to help you see the difference between the two conditions and how to replicate the divine love experience and how to continue that happening over and over again instead of making a stop. And how, with, when you give the oneness blessing, how you can actually help others have that experience by helping them, you know, talking to them about their heart being closed if they're not feeling that connection with God and what's going on within them. What, why are they shutting down their emotions and, you know, discussing all of those kind of things with them. Just like the people who have been helping you when you're in India did with you, trying to help you to get at all of that causal emotional baggage and try to release all of that so that you can have that complete experience. So it's part of an emotional release with the laughter? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Well, before talking about the process, most of them, or many of us, when we are doing a, a process, actually spend quite a bit of time preparing people and talking and, mm -hmm. and actually addressing these things. Yep, good. That's good. Yep. When I um, give it, like, I don't really give it much, but to my daughter and her young friends, they don't need any explanation. She just says, let my mom put her hands on you. And they seem to have experiences, but from what you're saying, it would be really good for me to give a little kind of talk about their emotions. Oh, I think the opposite. I feel, I feel with children. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if they're they in were, their 30s. So oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old they are. If they're already allowing the experience emotionally, there's very little you need to say. Okay. It's, only, it's only the emotional blockages that mean that you need to address something. See, if a person doesn't have an experience, then there's emotional blockages to the experience. So that's when you really need to address things within them, what's going on within them, you know, help them come to a state of truth emotionally. Now, they'll think they're in a state of truth. And that's the, pro that's the problem, is that all of us feel we're in a state of truth, right? Here, we all think we are. But, but the truth is in whether we're receiving divine love right at this moment. If we're not receiving divine love right at this moment, then right at this moment, we're not in a state of truth. We're in a state of error in some kind that we're holding on to emotionally. So you see, God gives you her love the instant you desire it permanently. And that's what a one means, is you, you will permanently be connected with God's love without any interruption. If we're not, then we're resistive. Right, right at the moment, we're resistive. Um, including myself, we're resistive. Because if we weren't, we'd be permanently receiving it, we'd be in the one condition. Yeah. When you go into that void or that nothing, there is no emotional content. So how would you know if you're still receiving the love? I don't have anything. You remember when you've received the love when you've been in the Pentecostal in a at a Pentecostal <coughs> church. When you've received it, was there a feeling of void when you were receiving yeah. it? No. So the feeling of void is not connected with divine love. The feeling of void is connected with the natural love state. No spirit above the seventh sphere, in the eighth sphere or above, is ever in a state of void. Right? And this is one of the differences between the natural love and the divine love. Right? 
So no spirit in the divine love state is ever in a state of void. And when you're on the divine love path permanently, you will never be in a state of void. We get into a state of void because we want to avoid, avoid emotion. So this is, you know, a lot of people describe it one with the universe as being in this beautiful, peaceful void. But actually at one with the universe is quite opposite to that. It's actually being at one with the entire universe and the universe being inside of you. You feel everything of the universe. Sorry? <laughs> no, but see, we're only stressed about busy when we've got an emotion. Yeah, I'm just thinking as compared to void, though, void is like... So the samadhi state is like the void state. All, almost all Eastern philosophies present a void state at, at, at the edge of the light of enlightenment. And they are all a six-sphere state. It's the state the Buddha permanently lives in right now. But it's not an at-one-ment with God state. He believes it's an at-one-ment with the universe. But it's not at-one-ment with God. They are very, very different states. And it's very important to understand the differences between the states. And you will feel the differences in the state as you connect with God. So the more you receive of divine love you receive, the more real you realise that what I've been saying to you feels like. You will feel like the universe is inside of you in the end. And you'll be at one with it. Right? You will know you're a different person. You will know that you're individual still. You won't feel like you're everybody else. You will, you will feel more individual. Remember Lucinda in the channeling? She said she's more an individual now than she's ever been. She is never, ever going to lose her individuality. Remember that? Mm -hmm. She said that all of, many of the six fear spirits believe they have completely lost all individuality. In fact, that's one of the reasons why they're willing to take over people on Earth in such a powerful way. Because they feel that everybody should, should be devoid of individuality. Which is the opposite goal to your incarnation. Your incarnation was to gain individuality and for that individuality to grow. Is there any, is it possible for us to have oneness while we're in this body? Yes, or? totally. Yeah. Yep. Out of all like the modern um, and new age kind of emotional techniques, mm -hmm. is there any that you think are good techniques in terms of dealing with your emotions? Um, yes, as long as all, with all of them you set your intention to deal with your emotions. Mm -hmm. What often happens with a lot of these techniques is we're setting our intention to get away from the painful emotion. So in other words, why do you go to a person for healing? Most of the time, it's to get away from the pain you're feeling at that moment, is it not? Feel better. Yeah. To feel better. Right? When in reality, your body's already telling you that you have an emotion that's causing this illness, and it's the emotion you need to experience. Now, if you go along to a person to help you access that emotion, then that's fantastic. But if you go along to the same person to help you feel better and not access that emotion and the body to feel better, you're just avoiding the emotion and you're going to recreate the illness. This is why, how many of you have been serial chiropractor visitors? <laughs> right? I was in my life, you know, not now, but I was. And because a certain part of your body always seems to go out. Right? And the reason why we do that is because we're trying to avoid the effect of the pain rather than deal with its cause. If, if we're going back over and over again, it's because we are not dealing with the cause. Our body is a beautiful, perfect system. If we have dealt with the cause, that cause will never come up in our body again. In other words, if you deal with a causal emotion that creates this il the illness or the disease or the, or the discomfort, that discomfort will never appear in you again. How do you find the cause? Well, most of the time the cause is right hitting us right in the face <laughs> and we're skipping over it. Right? Remember the law of attraction every single day of your life is bringing to you what the emotion is inside of you you need to face. Now, now, can I give an example? Last night, yeah. last night, myself and Grant were talking. We were in the kitchen. Grant was washing up, and he said, "You know, my cat does a real funny thing. My cat goes and gets fed over there where I put the bowl, and then he doesn't finish the meal. And then what he does 
is he goes to another part of the kitchen and I've got to take the meal to him and then he'll eat the rest of the meal. <laughs> this is what his cat does. And he was saying, what's wrong with the cat? <laughs> and what's wrong with the cat is nothing. <laughs> What, no, what, what is it? Why the cat does it is because of the emotion inside of Grant. He's wanting the cat to eat the food. Hurry up and let's clean up. Well, there's that, there's that. But there's also this emotion inside of Grant that he got. And I said, what was the emotion that comes up for you? And he's saying, for now or later, before, when it first happened. When it first happened, what was the emotion that comes up? Because he's intellectualized himself out of that emotion now. What, when it first happened, I felt a bit angry and frustrated, actually, was the emotion that you said. Because if, he didn't, if I didn't take the food to him, he wouldn't eat it. And he'd go away hungry, and then yeah. meow later for a meal. You know? <laughs> so, what's going on, you know? And so, and what did you feel? Controlled was like the cat's controlling me. So, what's the emotion that your cat's responding to? The emotion that's not being released in you is that you're feeling controlled, and there's an emotion in there that your cat just triggered. That's just a tiny little event, right? Just, just a cat bowl moving around. <laughs> and, and yet, there's a huge emotion connection with it. Right? A huge emotion of being controlled. That's a huge childlike emotion. Um, but in regards to like the chiropractic uh, scenario, <laughs> can it also be a spirit that's connected to you, making you great all the time? Certainly. But remember, a spirit only connects to you because of your like emotion. So in the end, it's still your emotion that causes this connection. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to get away from that. Yeah. And you see, every time we try to avoid personal responsibility, we really, what are we just saying? We're saying, I want to avoid my soul, I want to avoid my soul. Let's try and find another solution. That's really what we're saying. So we don't want to do that, we want to connect with that. Can you talk a bit about fear? Um, I can do. Yeah. Fear is huge, a huge impediment to emotion. Does it, before I go on though, does everyone understand what's actually happening with the movement itself mm -hmm. on earth? And this, by the way, is not just in the oneness movement. This is happening in many movements on earth. The same process, right? Where spirits are connected with individuals that then connect with other individuals, with other spirits connect to and so forth. And you get this growth, this, in fact, in the, initially you get this huge, quite fast growth because these people seem to have had instant changes. Does that make sense? So from your perspective, a person who's now enveloped by a spirit is going to look like they've had an instant change. And what do you want? Same. I want an instant change too, right? I don't want to have to deal with my emotions. I want to have an instant change and get into a state of love too. That's what I want. And so that's what attracts us many times to this process. You follow me? That's why many people resist divine love spirits. Because divine love spirit will not envelop you with their love. They will help you develop your love between you and God. They won't envelop you with their love. But this process will actually work quite beautifully, provided that people are encouraged to be, be always working with their emotions. It will complement and actually help that. And they understand who they're connecting to when they're receiving love. So who, they're, who you're feeling love from when you're feeling it from one of the avatars or from a, you know, one of the oneness blessing givers is the love of the person, not the love of God. Unless your soul is open to the love of God at that moment, then you're receiving the love of God. And if you're receiving the love of God, you will probably have a very emotional experience. Mm, so, it does happen often. Yeah, so when you're giving the oneness blessing to a person and all of a sudden they burst out crying and... They're probably, at that moment, receiving divine love, right? And what's triggered the divine love is you putting your hands on them and giving them some of your love and a spirit with you, giving them your love. And all of a sudden what happens is the person opens emotionally enough to have a desire from the heart to God. And all of a sudden they'll receive God's love. But because the reception of God's love is intense, they will always generally have an emotional experience with it. All right? If the person's not very developed, a blessing giver, yep. could they do any harm? Like, would there be not good spirits? I know blessing givers that are sucking sexual energy out of every woman that they give the blessing to. 
how, how is that affecting the person? Badly, yes. Can so, you say that again? so how could I know blessing givers who say they're giving the blessing, when in reality what they're doing is they're sucking sexual energy out of every woman, like men, who are sucking sexual energy out of every woman they're giving the blessing to. What they say they're giving the blessing to. And every one of those women, when they walk away, say they feel violated. Mm. Wow. Right? I kind of was getting sort of a sensation that the possibility like that could happen. Mm -hmm. Now, that person is obviously not giving love. What they are doing is they're taking sexual energy. They are violating sexually the people they say they're giving the blessing to. One thing I've become very aware of, I've, I've <coughs> did the um, process same time as Grant, so it was a few years ago, four mm -hmm. years ago maybe. And we, my friends and I who, who went at the time have become very aware that, that it is different, that, that people giving the blessing are, are doing different things. Mm -hmm. That, that, and what you, you say is something that we've observed. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is that if a person is in a poor spiritual condition themselves and doesn't release their emotional baggage, then it's impossible for them to reflect love. So if, I, if my intention, let's say my intention when I'm putting my hands on a woman is I want a sexual relationship or a sexual interaction with this woman, then that's a totally different intention than giving the woman love. Right? And I've seen this happen a lot, not only on the oneness movement, but lots in other movements as well, you know, where you know, it, almost every spiritual church, what do they have afterwards? They have a healing session and where these healers get up and they all get around together. And I don't know if you've been, but you know, they, they lay their hands on the top of the head of the thing and give them healing energy. And I've seen countless times where men who are doing the healing are actually drawing sexual energy from the woman. So and the woman walks away violated. Contact with obviously with ones, blessing givers. And um, I haven't had a huge contact with them. I've had a fair big contact with the spirits involved with them. So uh, is that how you've discovered this through that? Um, no, I've discovered. When I say all of this, this is all what I know is actually because of my personal experience of knowing what's happened. Yeah, in the I understand world. that. But I mean, with with the, with the blessing givers, with the men. I only, I just watch their energy. I can just see, like, I can feel a person's true emotional state, and so I can feel when their intention is actually, you know, sexual in so nature. So you've or, been or, in mm -hmm. a situation like in a room with people giving the blessing. That's the Not with people giving the blessing, but in other cases. But I've heard from others where I've been giving, you know, where they've felt violated. And the feeling of viol if you have a feeling as a woman of being violated when somebody's giving you the blessing, you need to stop the blessing. Because it's not the blessing you're receiving. Mm. And how do you protect yourself? Just Again, deal with your emotions. You attracted that event. Mm. You attracted a man putting his hands on you, trying to violate you sexually through his energy. So therefore, there must be something in you that has the sexual injury that would attract that event. So allow yourself to deal with that emotion. How walk away violated connect with the with that feeling because that feeling needs to be fully experienced before it'll be released. And so most of the time when I receive a blessing I don't feel anything so that would be my uh, what? <laughs> well, Is that they're not on the divine love? Or? Um, well a person giving you the blessing cannot give you divine love. I've said that already. All they can do is send their love to you. I think what's happening for yourself is that you're already in a state of love that's above the state of love of the person that's trying to give you the blessing. Mm. But you just don't believe it. And so, and so, you know, naturally it's not possible for love to flow. It's like, love is like water. And quite often it's called the water of life, right, in the spirit world. Love is like water in that it flows from the highest point to the lowest point. You follow me? So, so if you and someone else are interacting in a loving way, right, and you don't feel a flow of love, oftentimes it's because the flow of love is actually going in the opposite direction. <laughs> okay. It's going from you to the person. But that's if you're totally open emotionally. If I'm closed emotionally, then of course flow doesn't occur at all. So the question you need to ask yourself is, am I open emotionally, or is something, my law of attraction already demonstrating to me that something's already triggering me? And if something's already triggering you, if something's already you know, there right in your face to show you what emotionally you're avoiding, 
then let yourself experience that emotion. And when we recognize divine love, because um, like when I met Bhagavan, I didn't have the experience I thought I would have meeting such an avatar. Yeah. You will, you, because you've experienced divine love in the, in the Pentecostal movement, you've experienced the feeling of receiving divine love. Because you've experienced that, that has a totally different quality than the natural love experience that a person can give you. Okay. And you will know the difference when a person's in a natural love state. And they are in a natural love state. And I know many of you don't want to hear that, but that's the state that they're in. And the reason why they're attracted to the natural love state is because the spirits with them are heavily influencing them to be attracted to the natural love state. That being said, they are very open to new thought. So many of you know Peter Hebom, right? And, and Peter has actually had a chat with them about the divine love state. Right? So I'm very hopeful, and I'm speaking to these spirits here as often as I can about the divine love state. And I'm very hopeful that sooner or later all of them will actually make that shift mm. into the divine love state. Right? And if that's the case, if that happens, there's going to be a huge, like the oneness movement's just going to take like full growth. It's going to have full growth into all sorts of areas. How, how, how do you how do you perceive that change? If, if Amun Bhagavan and the six level spheres say, right now, I've got to change to that level. But still, when we're given a oneness blessing, it's not going to be God's love. So. I'm just trying to uh, you're allowed to give your love to anyone. Sure. Mm. And a spirit is allowed to give their love to anyone. Sure. So they can continue giving their love to anyone. The purpose of doing it is to open up the person emotionally to receiving divine love. Yeah. And but, it does but, happen. And it does happen, even though the person giving the blessing may not understand divine love at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it may even happen if, like, the, 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 these spirits here have not received divine love. Mm. Right? So you're therefore saying that if they receive divine love, and the energy is still coming from the, the beings in the 4th, 5th and 6th level, our that one that's blessing will become stronger and stronger and slowly shift? It, it'll, it, the quality of the love will change yeah. Yeah. into an emotional state, rather yeah. than people being addicted to the love feeling without getting into their emotion. Yeah. So the whole quality oh, of the oneness, the oneness movement would change, mm -hmm. and it would be it's such a positive effect on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, but it would also be much more respect of the person's free will, yeah, sure. right? Then it's what current, what is currently happening, because mm. at the moment there is not much respect in the six fear spirits state. There is not much respect of a person's real free will. Mm. And maybe it would result in people coming to receive a blessing because it's an environment where they can connect more to God, rather than coming to receive love from the blessing givers. Yes. Yeah. Every time you go to receive love from a blessing giver, you're you're actually exercising an addiction. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? It's like you're, you're, it's your cigarette. Love, this love that you're getting from the person is your cigarette. <laughs> you know, it's your addiction. What what we need to come to see is, if I am addicted to getting love from a person, then there is an emotional injury within me because it's actually that's actually preventing me from connecting with my with my God right? and receiving love permanently from God. Just taking it a bit further with the giving the oneness blessing, we were told that what it's actually doing is closing down one part of the brain and activating another part of the brain for enlightenment. Is that actually happening or is that we not need to worry about all that? What, what's happened is that a lot of the spirits, a lot of the spirits in this location know every part of the physiology, the physiology of your body. And so what they can do is they can, can open neural path nets and close down other path nets that cause you to think certain thoughts or not think certain thoughts that cause you to not experience certain emotions. So, so many spirits will exercise these abilities when, through the person's ectoplasm when you've got the person. So when you're a channel for these spirits, your ectoplasm is being used to modify the person to, to make these changes to their body. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And so yes, they can actually make those changes to the body. The question becomes is, does the person, is the person aware of what's happening to them? And do they care about what's happening to them? And are they aware that it's happening to them without their will being involved? Right? I think the, the fact is, though, people are coming for the blessing to feel better. And, and if they can... And that's part of the problem. And so if part of the brain has been changed and those people are not experiencing those emotions that were cut away, kind yeah. of thing... But, but the problem is the emotion is still in the soul, yeah. yeah that's right. It's not good. <coughs> 
it causes them to detune from the emotion, so they no longer think they've got the emotion, but the emotion is still in the soul and still needs to be experienced. Because when I get the blessing, I can just about 99% of the time, I can actually feel the skeletal muscles underneath my hands. Yep. Yep. What's happening there? It's, it's your ectoplasm being used to, to modify things within the person to help them connect emotionally. Now, I've got no trouble with it happening with the person knowing that. Well, you we follow me? were actually, I don't know what other people do, but whenever I have an, an a blessing event, I always explain that to people. Yeah, yeah. We can do it. <coughs> yeah as long as the person knows, then they are they saying that's what they want. And, and if you know, want to give them what they want, then go ahead and, and give it. It's not always a pleasant process. Many people do go into quite a, a powerful emotional mm -hmm. responses. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm not, uh, none of, I'm not criticising any of those things. What I'm saying is understand what's going on and make sure the person who are making those choices understand what's going on. See, I've always felt that was important, that people need to, that before you give a blessing, people need to know what the process involves. So. Mm. I spend an hour. I've never just done a blessing without any experience. Now, when you do the blessing, though, how many of you have thought that you're giving the person God's love? How many of you have thought that? Yeah, you're not. You can't. What you're giving the person is a love of a spirit who's with you, guiding you. That's what you're giving them. And, well, and your love. And your love. Yeah. 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 Can you not call them God's love and the celestial beings that aren't on the natural love path? Certainly, but, but you, a person cannot, like I can't call on God's love for you. You have to, in your soul, call on God's love to enter you. That's the personal connection. Right? You see, one thing that I would like to say, and I was talking about this in, uh, with Fran, and then we'll have a break, I think. One thing I'd like to say is that almost every single spiritual movement on earth, has this has happened to they have formed what I would call a priesthood and a laity. Is that how you spell laity? Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So, when I say a priesthood and a laity, there are those who have been initiated, and then there are the, are the potential initiates. There are those who know the truth, and then there are those who don't. There are those who are the priests, who look after all of the rites, and then there are those who they look after the rites for. Right? Every spiritual movement that began in the sixth sphere has the same layout. Do you follow what I mean by that? And the oneness movement has the same layout where there are people you are looking up to as more developed than yourself that you are getting things from. And every single movement, and I'm not criticising the others, it's every single movement that's ever been created from the sixth sphere has all had that. It, it, was, it was the thing that I attacked in the first century and continue to do so now. The reason, when, the way, when I say attack it, I don't mean I'm, at, I'm attacking it violently or anything like that. What I'm saying is, the truth is that God wants a, con, a, a personal relationship with you without any middleman. And God wants a personal relationship with all of the people you help without you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it strikes me there's a heck of a lot of people who wouldn't even consider going for that relationship if, they, if there wasn't this sort of thing. I mean, people are so caught up in their three-dimensional lives and existences, mm -hmm. you know. So what do you do? Do you... Getting superannuation and, and coming home, you know, and flopping in front of the telly, yeah. exhaustion, yeah. you know. And many of these people, I don't know, what... Is it going to help them by them trusting another person or trusting God? Which one's going to help them the people most? Can, I've watched it. I've seen people actually open with, with help from another loving being. Yeah, I'm not talking about help. I'm talking about idolisation. I'm talking about a priesthood laity, where people are treated as they know the truth, I don't. 
Siyaf would never, I've never referred to Amar and Bhagavan or Hernandagiri as, as gurus. I don't see them in that light. And I've had quite a close um, connection with Hernandagiri. I've been in a house where he lived and I've been, you know, I've spent time around him and it's been a very natural mm -hmm. connection. I haven't felt that I, um, I, I certainly respect and love him mm -hmm. because he's a very loving being, but yeah. I've never had that sense. And I, I don't really have it with Amran Bhagavan. I've never been, uh, a, I've never wanted a guru, mm -hmm. you know. And as I said yesterday, I was brought up Catholic, and even then, as a, and I'm not Catholic any longer. I haven't been for a long time. Mm -hmm. But um, even then, as a child, I questioned that hierarchical thing. Mm -hmm. So I think, but at the same time, I know I can be helped, and to be in a loving presence helps because it opens me. It, 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 it puts me in a space where but, I can be. But what I'm saying to you is, what is it opening you to? See, so well, you, you believe that it's opening you to God. No, because I know that I have to, that relationship with God has to, has to be with me. It's a personal thing. I know that. That's it. But it puts me in a space where I can open myself. Uh, I don't and agree. It helps. It puts you in a space where you avoid opening yourself. Because what you, are doing, what you do is avoid the causal emotion. Because it feels like this is something to be aware of, all of you. When you feel good, you become sometimes addicted to feeling good, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right? And you become so addicted to feeling good that you just want to feel good all the time. Mm -hmm. And often that is the thing that causes us to disconnect from God. Because in that process, what we do is we, we disconnect from all of the negative emotions within ourselves that cause resistance to feeling good. We disconnect from feeling good. We're trying to feel 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 good. And we choose to not feel bad. That's something then that we're doing. If we're choosing to do that, that's our choice because it's not what they're teaching at Ramas now. The deep energy just. That's what I'm saying. They're doing all the things necessary. They just need to add one more thing. And that is this thing that I need to. I can have a personal relationship with God personally. And I need to accept God's definition of God. Not my definition of God. As soon as I hold on to my definition of God, I'm on the natural love path. I think I think that may have come more from the fact that they were very, um, that they were wanting not can, can to I stop turn, you for a moment? turn it into a religion. I want to stop you for a moment. Yeah. Because you're not feeling your own emotion right now. There's an emotion in you that feels like you need to defend the oneness movement. Mm. I can happily shut up. No, no, I'm not asking you to shut up. I'm not asking you to shut up. What I'm asking is allow yourself to feel why you want to defend. Feel that emotion. There's an emotion that causes you to want to defend. There's an emotion inside. Right? All I'm stating is the truth about the movement. Right? Now, you don't have to accept that truth. That's fine. But, you know, I'm perfectly comfortable with you not accepting that. Like you, Are you perfectly comfortable with me saying what I think as well? But, but what, you're doing is you're try, what you're doing at the moment is avoiding the emotion in order to say what you think. Now, I'm perfectly comfortable with you saying what you feel, <coughs> but you're not saying what you feel, you're saying what you think. And that's a totally different state. Right? Let yourself feel what is the emotion driving the feelings that you, that, that's causing these thoughts to rise up in you. Now, is it a connection with a spirit who's feeling defensive? Or is it your own emotion? Firstly, work out the difference between those two things. And if it's your own emotion, let yourself, because there is an attraction if there is a spirit anyway, if it's your own emotion, let yourself feel what that emotion is. Can, do you understand? Does everyone understand what I'm saying about that? Like, I'm not saying any, things, any of these things to attack what you feel about the oneness movement. I have a lot of positive hopes for the oneness movement. Right? And that's the reason why I want to speak. I'm speaking with the spirits that are involved in the oneness movement as much as I can. Because I, I want the oneness movement to be such a, a more powerful force than what it is right now. Just like I want the Catholic Church to be a powerful force, more powerful force than what it is now, but in line with divine truth. Just like I want the Pentecostal movement to be more at one with God, in a line with divine truth. And I, I want the same for every single, every single thing that's ever happened. All of the religions that have been created in my name, I want to actually accept the divine truth, because they haven't. 
in many cases accepted it. Right? And, and that's the whole reason why I'm saying these things. I'm not, it's not one particular thing over another. It's all to do with the fact that every one of these things have created this relationship. Now, while you personally may not feel that, it is definitely being created. How hard is it to talk to the originators of these movements? Mm. Whoever they are. Right? It's very, very difficult because they set up barriers between you and them. Why do they do that? Right? But given all of that, okay, let's go back a step mm -hmm. to where we started and, and just talking about the mass of people. How are they going to... Do we not even bother to... to, to I mean, the mass of people aren't, aren't even thinking God. They're so busy thinking superannuation and survival. Can I, can I just present something to you as an idea? Is it better to present the whole truth to a person or, be, or project, present just a part of the truth that can mislead them onto different paths and then later have to correct it? Every time any of you have gone down a certain path and then realised that it wasn't the answer that you thought it was, how have you felt? Mm -hmm. Haven't you felt frustrated, angry, upset with the people that led you down that path? And all of those other emotions have all come up, have they not? Yeah, that's how we learn. Oh, certainly, it's how you learn. But do you need to learn that way? Wouldn't it be better? No, of course you don't. <laughs> but that is how we learn. Certainly, but you don't need to learn that way. You can connect with God directly and learn the best possible way. Would you but how is it this going mass to hear your message? I mean, By all of you changing at the soul level. That's how. Would you go to India and talk to Arun Bhagavan? I'll go anywhere to talk to anybody. <laughs> Why don't you? I think because I they are not more important to me than you are. No, but then if you can but, influence this whole, the whole way the thing's done, and as you say... But the only way I'm going to be able to do that is change myself, firstly. And then everyone around me will start seeing that what I'm saying is true, and then they will change. Right? That's the only way it's going to happen. It's just, this applies in your life as well as mine. Right? Yeah. By your changing, everyone around you will begin changing. By your living in truth, everyone around you will begin living in truth. That's how yeah. truth will affect the world. That's how it will occur. It's not going to occur by having presenting an, another half-truth to the world. Do you follow me? Yeah. It doesn't happen that way. That's why this world is full of half-truths. Right? That's why we have like over 100,000 religions on the earth today. The reason why we have 100,000 religions is because nobody wants to accept God's truth. They want to make their own, and they want to have a following, and they want to have a priesthood laity where I tell you what to do. They want to do all of that. that that's, none of that is what God wants. God wants to connect with you directly. Once God connects with you and you become a one with God, absolutely every single person around you is going to know. Every single person around you will feel it. Every single person around you will change because you've got into that condition. Every single person will change. And people, people won't even understand how they're changing. Because they'll, be they'll, be, they'll be feeling you and their intellect, you know, half the time they'll feel like they're being dragged along without, <laughs> without their will, but it's just their soul resonating with you. And that's how it will change. So don't, don't get into the trap of presenting half-truths when you know down the track you're going to have to unpresent half of them, find out what the whole truth is, present that. And, and when you do that, that will have the most powerful effect on you and everyone around you. You follow me? Yes. The only way you know the truth is when you feel it. It gets back to that, where have that personal experience. You know, a couple of you have already, in this session already, had that experience of receiving divine love, a big emotional experience, right? That's the emotional experience that you can replicate over and over and over and over again until you're at a point of at one with God. You can replicate that experience. And you can teach every single person that you know how to replicate that experience by them being open to the oneness blessing, by them being open to receiving the love that's from a spirit flowing into them that opens up their soul enough for them to want to connect with God directly. Right? You can use the oneness blessing as that. Or you can just give them love so they become addicted to you receiving love from you. You can do that too. But that, is that going to help them? No. And, and is it going to help you, really, either? 
God wants a direct connection with them as much as God wants a direct connection with you. That's what I'm trying to get at. Right. Now it's probably time to have a bit of a break. Mm. It's about a quarter after the time to have a bit of a break. <laughs> so we'll have a break and then we'll, then we'll answer some more questions. Can I ask a question? It's a process that happened in the one session. You may not know anything about it or have an answer, but that's fine. But one of the sessions was bringing in eight levels of ancestors and the oneness beings were involved, uh, the cosmic beings, and they did some work with them and, and took them to a very high plane or cleared the emotions or anything like that. Do you have any concept or any ideas? Because they didn't elaborate what it was and it wasn't really important. What, what happens a lot in your own life is that uh, the reason why you have a lot of the emotions you currently have within yourself is obviously because your parents had the emotions within them. Right? And then their parents had their emotions within them, and their parents had their emotions in them. And a lot of the parents that have passed have never dealt with those emotions. So they're, they're in a first fear condition, not uh, dealing with any of their emotions. And so what, what often happens is a higher being takes the opportunity while, while you are there. So, so a six fear spirit will take the opportunity while you're there, because a six fear spirit, of course, understands that these spirits that are surrounding you yeah. are in a much poor condition, affecting your condition. Yeah. And so what they'll try to often do is try to help those spirits move to a new location mm -hmm. in the spirit world, in other words, grow in love. Yeah. And that's going to alleviate some of the issues that surround you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually change anything inside of you, though, mm -hmm. because, because all it does is alleviate some of the external burden. So yeah. if you, could, if you, could, you could liken it like this. Let's say, let's say you were sitting in this room right now, and you could actually see... Your father, your great grand, your grandfather, your great grandfather, and so forth and so forth, eight generations back, mm. right, sitting all around us right now, and they are all in different emotional conditions. But let's say none of them have actually grown emotionally very much at all. So for hundreds of years, many of them have been in the spirit world, not not grown at all. So remember, in the channeling, uh, Natalie channeled uh, Howard, mm -hmm. and he was there for what, 121 years or something in one location. So this is very much the case what happens in the spirit world. Now that's exactly what's going on in your life right now actually. It's just that you can't see the grandfather and the great grandfather but they're still hanging around you. right? They're still interested in you because from their perspective they're very connected to the earth and you're their progeny. Right? And they are infecting you with their emotions but only through the law of attraction. Right? So the key thing again to work on is alright Sure, releasing these spirits, which is what these, what the, you know, the person who's in the uh, six fear state is doing, is helping release those spirits. Yeah. But releasing those spirits is only a small part of the equation, yes. because you have an attraction, mm -hmm. and the attraction is based on your soul condition, and that soul condition is what's been attracting them to stay around you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you still need to work on that condition. Mm -hmm. So in the end, everything still gets back to dealing with your own soul condition. Mm -hmm. So while alleviating spirit influence can help a person quite a lot, it isn't the solution to their problems. And yeah. changing the soul condition can help those beings. Yes, uh, what's happened with my two grandfathers that I have, they're both passed, they both passed in really terrible conditions. They're now in quite good conditions in comparison, but they're now in a third sphere spirit condition. Um, when they passed into the hills, just because they hung around me and I could feel them hanging around me for the last five years and they've been watching what I've been doing emotionally. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, and I've learned from that. And that often happens uh, with your ancestors where they hang around you. They notice someone a little brighter than the rest of their family uh, okay. and therefore they hang around and say, what's the difference with this guy? You know, they, they, they investigate it, you know. Yeah. What's the difference with him compared to the rest of them? What's going on? They, I want to know what's going on. And then they watch what you do, you know. And I've had quite a few mm. six fear spirits actually come to talk with me mm. uh, because they notice different chakras in my body than a six fear spirit has. Mm -hmm. And so they and so what they do is they come and talk to me because of that. Yeah. Um, and and want to know why, what's going on, you know, why are you different than I? Did God create in fact I've had some six fear spirits come and say, God must have created two different types of beings. Wow. He created the types of beings that can get into seventh sphere and above, uh, and he created a different type of being that can only get to the sixth sphere. Yeah. So these, so I've had whole groups of six fear spirits come and talk to me about mm. why there's different types of beings God created. They actually believed yeah. that God created two different types of humans. Mm. Wow. 
And uh, once I explained to them that the, the change in the spirit body condition is all to do with divine love, mm. then, they, then they shifted on the divine love path. But, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of <coughs> understandings in the spirit world still, misconceptions in the spirit world of what the truth is. And in the sixth sphere, there are many spirits in the sixth sphere who actually believe themselves to be at the pinnacle of their own development. Mm. But they recognize that other people are in a higher development, mm. but they feel that that's not possible for them. Yeah. Mm. That God created two types of beings, mm. and it's not possible for them. And it's a sad place to be, because it's, uh, in a way, because even though you're perfected in natural love and perfectly happy yourself, there's this smidgen yeah. of the dissatisfaction yeah. of why am I different to them? Yeah. You know, and they don't respond to that mm. until certain emotional things occur. Mm. Would you mind explain? You explained something to me that was really helpful to me about how spirits can be really helpful what we do because they're not so open. Mm. That was really helpful. Yeah, and um, particularly first sphere and second sphere spirits, but particularly first sphere spirits, um, very rarely can they connect to higher spirits. And the reason why they can't is because when a person first ch uh, um, goes into the spirit world, there's lots of mistrust that they still have. Right? So uh, you imagine the average Joe Blow in Australia um, passing into the spirit world, drinking his way, you know, here on earth he's having a bag and having a drink and you know, getting around with his mates or whatever, has no idea, no concept of any spirituality at all. He passes. So he'll pass into the first sphere. He might be not in a bad condition. He might be just in this condition where he's, you know, he's just been a fairly good guy, you know, just drank a bit too much occasionally, and but but you know he wasn't he was he wasn't a bad guy. Didn't harm anybody really badly or anything like that. He'll pass into the first sphere, and and he passes and he realizes the first thing, of course, he realizes is that he's still alive, which is something he probably didn't expect, right? <laughs> and and then he passes. Uh, and then then he starts thinking. Well, what? Where am I now? Like, I was on Earth, and I'm used to that. Where am I now? And there's lots of questions that naturally arise. And the problem is, is that he still has the same viewpoint he has on Earth, and that is, there is no thing. There is nothing beyond where I am now. So where is he going to go to get the answers? Most times, what he does is he goes back to Earth. So if a celestial being visits him... He won't even see him. Right. He won't even see a celestial wizard. Uh, just like you can't, many of you can't see a spirit, he can't see a celestial spirit. He won't even see, won't even know they exist. All he can see is where he's at, right at the moment. Right? But he, can, he has access to the Earth, because that's where he came from. The Earth is, a, is unique, all the physical universe is unique in the sense that every spirit has access to it. And so he has access to the earth and he can, actually, he, he can actually access things here. So what he starts doing is investigating things on the earth again. You know, oh, maybe I should have believed in God. You know, maybe there is a God. If there's an afterlife, maybe there's a God. I don't know. He still doesn't know. But now he starts investigating that. And so what often he does is he comes back to earth and he starts looking at people. And when a spirit looks at you, they see your spirit body firstly, not your material body. And your spirit body has a certain level of brightness based on your soul condition. And so what he does is he, he, he looks at your spirit body and, if, and then he notices that, oh, this person's got a brighter spirit body that I can see easier than that person. And in fact, for most spirits, seeing your material body is very hard. It's like a grey body to them. But, but if you've got divine love in you and you've grown in love, they see you as a complete form, right? So... So they start looking at all these differences and investigating it. Now, they still are not connecting to higher spirits at this point. They don't even trust them. They don't even know they exist in many cases and they won't even acknowledge their existence even if they do. Many of them are in a state of fear. So when they see a bright light coming towards them, the first thing they do is run away and hide. Right? Because they're afraid of what this bright light is going to do, kill them or something. You know, Because that's the emotion they have of fear from the earth. right? So the only place that they get answers from is back on the earth. And so they start investigating things on the earth. And this is why you can help them probably more than they can help you. The majority of spirits connecting with mediums on the earth are first sphere spirits. And the reason why is that the majority of mediums on the earth are in a first sphere condition. And like attracts like. There are very few mediums in a second sphere condition on earth. Now, because of that, 
the majority of spirits connecting to them are first fear spirits. And because of that, the first fear spirit is looking for truth just as much, if not more, than what you are. And you want truth from them. Through this. You see what's going on? So a lot of times, an interaction with you through a medium for one of these spirits is very confusing. Because they come to you for assistance, and all that all you're trying to do is ask them questions, and, they, and they've got no idea how to answer them. Right? And, and so they give you the answers that you seem to want, which is, oh, I'm feeling okay now. Yeah, thanks very much. And you know, and but they don't, they can't discuss with you what they really want to discuss, which is, why am I here? Where I am? What, what what's going on in my life now? What do I do now? You know, all these different questions arise in their in their heart. You know. So the truth is that you can actually help these spirits by your own example in particular, far more than many of these spirits can help you. If you're aware of what the truth is. Because the truth is not so easily available. The reason why the truth isn't so easily available is because the truth is based upon desire. This is why I said to seek first the kingdom. Is that it's the seeking. It's the seeking. Now I said keep on asking, keep on knocking, and it will be opened to you. All of you have gone to the Oneness University because you sought. You sought more truth in your life. That's why you ended up there. If you never had those, if you never had the previous experience where you sought truth, you might never have it. Your life wouldn't be like it is right now, right? You sought the truth. You sought more truth. That's why you're even here. You're seeking more truth. You're seeking more truth. That is a beautiful quality of your soul, and that is the quality that appeals to God. The reason why it appeals to God is because He wants you to use your free will to seek more truth. Now the instant you do that, and this applies to all spirits as well as people on earth, the instant you realise there is more truth, and you really want it in your heart, is the instant you'll get the help you need. When you think you already know the truth, and you don't want to seek more truth, from that time on you will no longer receive the guidance you really need. Because you don't want it. So the law of desire, and that's called the law of desire, the law of desire is such that God responds to your desire. But it needs to be a pure desire. And all of these spirits in the spirit world are in the first sphere, looking for things on earth. God's waiting for them to have a desire. And then they will receive all the help they need. And that applies to you in your own life as well. Often, often though, you will ask for God for something, the next day it will be presented to you, and you will say, that's not what I was thinking I wanted. <laughs> and you will dismiss what God just offered you, and a week later you'll be still praying to God, to ask, and God sends you another thing. Uh -huh. And there's a joke that goes along that line. Yeah. 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 Most of you probably heard. And... and uh, and so, you know, this is what we often do in our relationship with God, is we ask God for something, and then it come, the truth comes along in the guise that we're not ready for, or that we can't accept emotionally, and then we reject that truth, and then later it was presented again, and it presented again. Right? Many people have said to me that they were longing for truth, and then the next day, they say they heard something about, you know, having a meeting at Ulo or something. Many people say that. And then you've got to ask yourself, well, the law of attraction works positively as well as negatively, right? You didn't attract a crazy man into your life. You attracted a man who knows some truth in your life. But that's my belief. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be yours. <laughs> right? And, the, and the, key, the key thing to realise is that if you've exercised a longing, trust the results of that longing. Right? If your longing has been for more truth, and you, you've had that longing all your life, trust that longing that this is where God is taking you. God responds to your prayers. A prayer is your longing. Your longing. If you have a longing for more truth, that's a prayer to God. God is responding to your prayer. God is responding to your longing. And trust that. If you can trust that, your progress will be much more rapid than if you just dismiss it every time and then it gets presented again and, oh, I wish that AJ fellow would go away or, oh, I wish that, you know, oneness movement, I'm sick of that now. And, oh, I wish that fellow... You know, it might even be your next door neighbour not going to do all once a day. And you're sick of it. There's something he can offer you and you're just not listening. You 
follow me? Yeah. Yeah. There's some truth that you've been praying for, that you've been longing for it yourself, that you're just not responding to. Yeah. It'll be offered again. And God's very patient. He'll offer it again, and offer it again, offer it again, and again. <laughs> until, until we make the choice to have it. Yeah. One question that's been asked uh, earlier was the issue of fear. And, and also the issue of you know, how I can actually connect with some of my emotional blockages. Some of you have mentioned that you feel like you haven't had an emotional experience, even with the oneness blessing. And also that you realise that there's some blockages occurring with regard to receiving divine love. So I'd like to make a few suggestions to you um, about how to connect more emotionally, how to sort of undo some of those blockages. Would that be all right? Yeah. 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 <coughs> all right. So remember our soul. What's our soul? Emotions. 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 Emotions, yeah. Desires. Intentions. Intentions. Personality. Yeah. Personality. And so forth, right? So there's our soul, here's God's soul. There's a connection, remember, with the Holy Spirit. There's a connection, and there's the Holy Spirit is the connection of truth. When I talk about truth, we're not talking about intellectual truth. We're talking about emotional truth. Big difference between the two, and I know sometimes we get really confused about the two. Intellectual truth is where you know in your mind that something is truthful. So many of you have expressed that to me already, like you know that I'm speaking the truth about certain things. And you can feel that, yeah, that's the truth. Now, your soul is constructed in a very similar way to God's soul. Of course, you're made in God's image. Now, remember, at the start I say that there's two of God's primary qualities are divine truth and divine love. Right? And you, in your own soul, have, have two of those qualities. You have a truth quality in your own soul. It's not divine truth yet. It's your truth. And you have a love quality in your own soul. That's natural love. That's your love that you can give to others, right? So you are created in this way in God's image. Now, often what happens is we start having truth realisations. So on the truth side, we're starting to process things and we're having realisations of truth. But on the other side, the emotional side, we're not experiencing love. We're not experiencing the emotions of love. So we're recognising truth, but not feeling the love. Huh? Give me the love, give me the love. So what we do is we need to start recognising what's going on within us that causes us to not, do, not feel the love. Now the first thing that we need to come to understand is the truth about ourselves. So let's just look at the truth about ourselves. The one, truth number one really is, if I am not receiving love, then I don't want it. From God or from anybody? What are you talking about? Not from anybody, anybody. But, okay. but particularly from God. Okay. If I'm not receiving love, then I don't want it. <coughs> Can I say that again? Because it's a very confronting thing, really. If I'm not receiving love, then I don't want it. I'm not talking about here, am I? Mm. I'm talking about there's a feeling in me rejecting love. You follow me? Mm. So I'm not talking about an intellect. In my mind, I think, yeah, I want love. Give me love. Give me love. You know, of course I want love. What, what are you crazy, AJ? Like, I want, I want love. You know, everybody wants love. But if I'm not getting it right now, I don't want it. That's the truth. And this applies to all of your feelings. If I am not, if you are not feeling it right now, so if I am not feeling, then I don't want to. <coughs> you look at a child. Does a child decide whether to feel? Doesn't, does it? No. What does it do? It has no choice. Just, just like, bang, something happens, and bang, they're in the emotion. Isn't it? It's like, yeah. and, and then next, and it can be even a minute later, they're in a totally different emotion. Right? Bang, something after that, and then they're in a different emotion. 
Right? So does a child make decisions to feel? No, it just feels. Right? So if I'm not feeling, if my state is right now, I'm not feeling my emotions, then I've made a choice, there's something going on there, where I don't want to. Don't judge it. You're allowed to choose to not want your emotion. So don't judge it. Don't condemn yourself for that. Understand it's just the truth. I'm not feeling right now, so I don't want to. Obviously. If I wanted to, I'd already be feeling. If I really wanted it in my heart, I'd already be feeling. Now, and people say to me, but I really do want it, but I really do. No, no you think you want to. Because when you really want to, then you will automatically, right from that moment, be feeling. You follow me? Yeah? Now, the next step after that is ask yourself, why? Why don't I want to feel? So, all right, someone says to me, oh, I'm feeling, you know, I feel sad. And I'm saying, no, 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 you're not feeling sad. There's sadness in you. Because if you were feeling sad, you'd be crying right now. <laughs> right? So I agree there's sadness in you. And it's all locked up, it's all blocked. But when you choose to feel it, you will actually have tears, you know, you'll be crying. That's the sadness being expressed, experienced. So the question they need to ask themselves is, and, not, and don't tell yourself lies. I want to feel my sadness, I want to feel my sadness. No, you don't. If you wanted to feel your sadness right now, you'd be crying. You follow me? Right now you'd be crying if you wanted to feel your sadness. So therefore you don't want to feel your sadness if there's sadness there. Right at this moment. Be honest. You see? It's the spirit of truth. We need to be truthful even when we don't want things. Right? So we're, say, we're saying this truth. If I'm, if I'm not feeling it right now, then I mustn't want to feel. Okay, I can admit that truth to myself. And it's a powerful truth, actually, when you think about it. Because what are you saying? You're saying, I take full responsibility for the choice to not feel. You follow me? This is the statement, really, is saying, I take full responsibility. I am... Oh, see, a lot of times what happens is we say, I want to feel, I want to feel, I want to feel, and I'm just not feeling. And what that's doing is actually telling ourselves a lie. And telling everyone else around you a lie too, actually. And often we want to tell ourselves lies so we feel good. <laughs> we want to say, yeah, I really do want to feel, so that we feel good about ourselves and we don't condemn ourselves. Right? So instead of doing that, I'm saying, admit the truth. If I am not feeling, then I don't want to, right at this moment, feel the feeling. And that's okay. You're allowed to make that choice. It's very important to understand. There's nothing wrong with you making that choice. That's your choice. You have free will. God gave you that gift. You're allowed to make that choice. But if you want to progress, you need to go to the next level and ask yourself why. Why? And this is where I encourage people to write down a fear list. And remember, a fear is false expectations or false beliefs or false emotions appearing real. Okay? In other words, you believe them to be true. So what's a fear list? A fear list is a list of all the emotional reasons why you do not want to feel your emotions. Uh, who feels, says they want to cry? Who wants to connect with their tears? They feel that sad. Yeah. Want to come up here, Ben? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> now tell me all the reasons why you don't want to do it right now. I would feel embarrassed. Right. Um. And if we all saw you crying. The moment my mind is not thinking. That's okay. Just let yourself feel your feelings. If I triggered you and you started crying right now, mm -hmm. how would you then feel about that? It would be a release. I'd feel glad actually. You'd feel glad? Yeah. Okay. So you've just skipped out of truth. Right. 
but you're getting closer to it because you can feel the tears almost coming up, can't you? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you feel what's going on inside? Uh, I really felt that I was really would be glad. Have you got sadness? I think there's a lot of sadness there. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm not feeling it right now, so there must be a reason. And it's, a, it's a reason that it is that I've made a choice. So what's the choice I've made? The choice I've made is I can't have this sadness right now. Why can't I have it right now? What will happen if you had it now? It might go on for too long. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get judged. I just don't feel, I just can't connect mm -hmm. to... I can actually tell you all your emotions because I can feel them all at the moment. <laughs> tell me. Help me. No, I'd, I'd rather not do that. <laughs> but the key is now to ask yourself that question. To ask yourself that question. And I know you're on the spot, so that's part of the emotion that's blocking you. I feel really open. I, I just feel like very relaxed, but I can't connect to any of the emotion you're saying. Okay. Do any of you, can any of you feel, what's your name? Barbara. Barbara. What, what, can any of you feel what Barbara's feeling? All of you are I, capable. I don't feel sadness. Don't feel sadness. Does she have sadness in her? Yeah. I don't know. Everyone does. Well, I can feel Barbara's sadness. Yeah. Yeah. I know she has sadness in her. And you know that you have sadness in her. Yeah, I do. I'm yeah. not connected to it at the moment. Exactly. And so the question then becomes, why aren't I connected at the moment? It's oh, nice that you're touching me on my back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel a lot of love at the moment. I feel a lot oh, awesome. of love just awesome. being here. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Uh, so, so the next step now, see, and this is the thing with, that's happened in the past for you, is that you've become addicted to the feeling of love so much that you ignore the other emotions that are within you. That's possible. Yeah. And so, if you can allow yourself to just connect with it, there's some underlying fears, and we'll talk about some. Can you, you remember, you tell me a little bit. Oh, I've got a lot of fear. Tell me about how, you, how your mother and father treated you when you cried. I was ignored. I was by myself. You were ignored? Yes. And you were shunned? Yes. You put in your own, any of those things? Yes. There was no time for me. There was quite a few of us. Yeah. So if you experience your emotion now, you're going to feel like you're shunned as well, hey? Yeah. yeah. So that's one blockage. Can you, did you feel your energy just shift when I said that to you about your childhood? Yes. Yeah. You went from that feeling of liking the love feeling into that feeling of, oh, a bit, a bit more closer to the grief. Yes. Yeah, you can feel that shift. Yeah. Just by saying one truth. And that truth was, mum and dad just ignored me when I cried. How many of you were ignored when you were crying? Yeah. In fact, and they teach many mothers that right from a baby, yeah. don't they? Like, you know, when, you're, when your child's crying in its crib, you've got to do it, give it the ignore, ignoring trick, which, which, which basically means, you know, they don't get their stuff satisfied. And what does the child learn in that state? Rejection, yeah, lots of feelings. That's one feeling that's blocking. Right. Yeah, I'm really glad. I, I mean, I know I have a lot of fear in myself, and I mm. feel I'm blocked to access it. Mm. I'm aware of that. Mm. So let's talk more a bit about that. Th thank you for oh. being, being a volunteer. You're welcome. <laughs> so can you see what happens though? And initially there was that feeling there of no, I'm not feeling anything. I'm fine. I'm quite fine. I'm aware there's sadness in me that's blocked. But then as soon as I talk about childhood event, th there's an instant change in the flow of energy. And almost, and if you're in a different situation, in a more private situation, I'm pretty sure with a bit of talking more about that, you would have connected with some sadness. And so um, all we need to do is start admitting the truth about our blockages. You follow me? And all of a sudden, the the emotion will start flowing. That's how our bodies work, and that's how our, emotion, our soul works. 
This is the beauty of a fear list, is a fear list will help you, help you start identifying the emotional reasons of what is going on inside of you that cause you to block your emotions. And you'll find that almost every one of them is a childhood experience where you were punished for crying, where you were ignored when you cried, when you were sent to your room when you cried, when you, you know, were told to shut up or give you something to cry about and all of those kind of things, all of those messages that you were sent are still a part of your programming and they are your blocks. They are the reasons why you don't want to feel. Uh, so this is why it's very important for you to start asking yourself, why don't I want it? But you can't get to that state if you tell yourself you want to. Acknowledge the truth. I, if I'm not feeling right now, I don't want to. That's the truth. Because the truth of the way God made you is when you really want to, you will be experiencing it right at that moment. That's the truth. Can you do that with love also? Certainly. Certainly. If I'm not feeling love right now, then I don't want to feel love. What's going to happen if you feel love? See, there's a lot of things that might happen when you feel love, right? For, let's, let's say for a woman who's been abused, when she feels love from a man, what, what's going to happen there? Trigger the memories. Well, there might be memories of sexual abuse come up, there might be, you know, all these different things about being violated come up and all. That, she doesn't want to feel those things, right? But AJ, the, the memory's traumatic and the love is positive. Mm -hmm. But it triggers it because they thought they were being loved and they were abused. Mm, that's right. It's because of all the false beliefs being triggered. Mm. And this is why truth and error are attractors. Any person in error is going to attract truth automatically. Right. Hey, Jude, what about laughing? Well, I've spent my whole childhood laughing whenever I was concerned about anything, and I still do that. Yep. So is that the same thing, or is that a really or is that a... No, that was a tool you were taught to avoid. And many men turn into jokers. Okay. You notice that, you know, when guys, you know, you get some guys at the life of the party and a joke, a joker, you joke, they joke about everything. And many men do the same thing. It's an emotion from childhood of a method to avoid the reality of the pain. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying don't be jokers, mm. because in the end you will, you know, you will be perfectly happy and you'll be joking all the time. But don't manufacture it to avoid something. If, you, if you're fearful and joking, then you're avoiding the fear. Okay. Mm. So let yourself state the truth about what's going on inside of yourself emotionally. That's very important. Um, now, I was thinking that perhaps uh, with regard to the oneness blessing information, the important thing there to realize is that when you're giving the blessing, you are giving your love or a spirit is giving love, their love, through you to the person. Now that can have a very, very positive effect on the person in it could, it, that it can open their soul to experiencing God's love and love from other people. However, it can also have the effect on the person depending on their intention, that they draw love from you without doing anything else themselves. In other words, that they learn to use you as their addiction. Mm. Right? It can have that effect as well. And in fact, in many cases, it can have that effect more often than it has the other. Mm. Because most people <coughs> on earth are still in the mode of wanting to avoid their own emotions. Most people on earth are still in the mode of wanting the good feelings and rejecting the bad feelings. Wanting the pleasure, but with no pain. And what I'm saying to you, remember, I think in one of the recent discussions we had in Utah, I said, what is, emotion, what, what is um, being open emotionally? It is actually desiring to feel every emotion within mm. you. The pleasure and the pain. That's what humility is, in fact. Desiring to feel every emotion within you, the pleasure and the pain. Right? Not just accepting the pain, but actually desiring to feel every emotion. And that takes a bit of a shift. That's the shift into truth that we all need to make at some point. 
spirit or he. Now, once we shift into truth, we can still stay on the natural love path if we wish, of course. Or we can connect with God directly, which is the emotional connection of longing for God's love to enter us. It's up to you what you do with that. And it's also up to any person you help what they'll do too with that. The key is to understand that that is not where the movement has begun. The movement has begun and is currently <coughs> in the sixth fear state, which is the perfection of natural love state. The movement has the high possibility, I feel, of getting onto the divine path. And I'm very hopeful that that's going to happen over the coming months even, uh, depending on what happens with the discussions with spirits and so forth. But in the end, you don't need to wait for that to occur. You can start developing your own connection with God and having that individual connection. And as your soul grows, that is going to change everyone around you automatically. They will feel the effects of that change within you. How does the Holy Spirit come into working with us or do we call on that? The Holy yeah. Spirit is not an entity. It is one of God's energies. And in fact, it's God's, it's God's energy that is the conduit for his love. So uh, the Holy Spirit is an is a energy that comes from God that is like a plug that connects between you and God. So when people say in the religious movements, like the born-again Christian movements, of I you know, pray to the Holy Spirit or I long for the Holy Spirit, they're real, what they're really doing is longing for the divine love to enter them. And it's the Holy Spirit that makes the connection. The Spirit of Truth makes the connection once they long for it. So see the Holy Spirit just as a, as a power cord, plugging into the big power network grid called God and plugging into your you know, crown chakra. That's the Holy Spirit. It's only going to remain connected with you when you're in a state of truth and when you're in a state of pure longing. And when I say pure longing, I'm talking about a soul-based emotional longing. When, when you do that, the Holy Spirit connects and because you're longing to God for the love, the love will flow. The love will flow as long as you are in a state of truth. Right. The instant it stops flowing, you are now know that there's a truth that you're not accepting. And look at the law of attraction because the law of attraction will be telling you already what that truth is. It's just that we often don't see it. So any time you feel the energy, because I feel that very often, yep. the energy coming in on the top of my crown chakra, yep. that's divine love. When you're longing for God's love to feel that, yeah, and you feel it entering your crown chakra, yep. eventually what will happen though is the, it would intensify because you connect with your emotion and you'll be having emotional experiences with it. Yeah. So what was your name, sorry? Brian. Yeah. So Brian, we were just having a discussion earlier, my, Brian and myself, and Brian was talking about how he's now realised that the mind is really just something that's very, very much something that he can just ignore most of the time, and he can feel these overwhelming sensations of love flowing into his soul, and he's connecting with people in a different way as well, because of the love flowing. And that's what will happen the more intense these experiences get. But they'll only be intense when I allow all of my own feelings. That's when they'll only be intense. See, I, though, what you're saying, I experience that. Yep. And, but what I, what I have difficulty <coughs> with is really <coughs> accessing the root cause of the emotion, even though I, maybe there's a blockage there. Well, I'm yeah, the truth is you don't want to access the root cause of the emotion, remember? And then ask yourself why there's a fear. And remember, one of those fears is this feeling that I'm going to be left alone if I'm emotional. That's one big fear for yourself. The fear that you'll be punished by exclusion. And this happened to a lot of you in your childhood. Mm -hmm. Like, when you cried, you were pushed aside. Uh, you were told you were just a dribbling, like, there's nothing to cry about, and all those kind of things. But these are all the messages that you received when you were children. And they all become blocks. So Barbara could actually take herself back to a memory where she was put in a room by herself yep. and that would trigger... That'll trigger that emotion. We did that a lot in India yep. during the 21 day process. Yes. So that was part of our, yeah. our process. And the key now is to do it with yourself. Mm. To, to take full responsibility inside of yourself and do that process with yourself because you're capable of doing it. 
take full responsibility. You don't need another person even to help you with it, even. But you can get as much help as you want. Just ask for it. But in the end, do it. You can do it yourself. Just put yourself in your imagination back in the situation, and if you just allow the emotion to flow, it'll come up quite rapidly. They'll all be childhood-based emotions. Yeah. And if it's not coming up, it's because I don't want it to. Remember? I don't want it to. If it's not happening right now, I don't want it to. And look at why you don't want it to. Examine that. Don't condemn yourself for not wanting to, because these were all childhood constructions that were very painful, right? The reasons why you didn't want to were all very painful reasons. Mm. Let yourself find them, discover them, and experience them. And then it will flow. All right. Can I just ask a question? Um, whenever we're feeling emotional, like when I left the meeting last night, I felt like I really wanted to have a good cry and thinking, is that a causal thing or is that an effect? Yeah, you'll find every time, uh, if you, every time you come along to a lot of these sessions, um, You'll find that there, you, you'll come. You sometimes go away quite exhausted, uh, or go away quite teary and upset. Mm. So, so I suppose my question is like to, to go with it and just have a good cry. Go does, with it, it. does it really matter if it's causal? Not or Not at all. Yeah, not at all. Don't I, I don't even think about whether it's causal or not for myself. Mm. If I just feel like crying, I just burst out crying. Sometimes it's effect, <laughs> and then usually it leads me down the road to a cause. Mm. But, uh, you know, I, I don't even think about it anymore, whether it's effect or cause. I just feel like crying, so I cry. And you kind of cultivate that thing that a child does. They just... They feel like crying, so they cry. Yeah. You know, they feel like laughing, so they have a laugh. <laughs> you know. So if you've spent all these years working on your emotions, what chance do we have? Well, <laughs> the thing is, too, the thing you've got to remember is, firstly, um, I've got a lot more emotions to deal with than the average person. I've got six sets of emotions to deal with, whereas you've got one set of emotions to deal with. So, so you know, I've had thousands and thousands of causal emotions to deal with. So it's taken me a long time to work the way through those causal emotions. Um, whereas the average person in their first incarnation have, does not have that amount of emotion to deal with. I have emotions to deal with from the first century, from my life in the spirit world, from, my, from the reincarnation process and my life now. And then I've got the emotions that I took from my soulmate that came from the first century in the spirit world as well. So there's six sets of emotions that I've got to process. So in the first century, I, I wasn't sexually abused, but my soulmate was. And I took all, my, almost all of those emotional memories of sexual abuse. So I arrived in this century with all these feelings that I'd been abused sexually. And, uh, and so I've had to work my way through all of those feelings as well. And that's just one set of emotions that, that I didn't have in the first century that I had to work through this time. So, so I understand that if you um, have far less emotion than a reincarnated person to deal with. So that's the first thing to understand. Um, secondly, I didn't start the divine process doing it until five years ago, even though I've been working on my emotions. My first goal... When I, set, when I set up my life in the spirit world, my first goal was to become a six-sphere spirit while I was on earth first, and then go through <coughs> the emotional process of what it felt like to change from a six-sphere spirit to go back to the third sphere and develop on the divine love path. And that, that switch occurred for me about two and a half years ago. So you don't need to go through all of that either. It's something that I've planned for myself to experience because I hadn't experienced it before and because I wanted to understand how to help six fear spirits in the spirit world to progress. So um, my suggestion, again, you won't have to experience any of that progression. All you need to do is progress on the divine love path with one set of emotions. And you can do that within two or three years. You can have completed that path and be at one with God. Yeah. There's people, spirits in the spirit world have done it in like six months, nine months of our time on earth. Yeah, and you're totally capable of doing that. It's a bit harder on Earth at the moment because the Earth is not geared for your emotional processing, whereas the spirit world is perfectly geared for your emotional processing. But in a short period of time in the future, the Earth is also going to be geared for emotional processing. Yeah. So it'd be really, it's going to be fantastic. The, the more people that do it, it's harder for the first group of people too. 
because the first people who grew, it's like every pioneer, you know, mm. like the first one took a thousand years, <laughs> the next one took two years, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, learning how to fly, you know, the Wright brothers took like seven or eight years to build their plane and heaps of <laughs> trying to convince everybody and eventually they got it off the ground for 35 seconds or whatever it was, mm. right? Then what was, then what happened next? And when the next plane got built and within 10 years, they were flying planes in war, dropping bombs on people. Right? That's how, how much progress it happened in 10 years when it took what, thousands of years before then, before they could even fly. So for the first person to do anything, it takes a long time, and then the next person a bit shorter, the next person a lot shorter. So in the future, there will be people like your own children who will within six months, three months, be at one with God. Mm. Why is there going to be this closing of the heavens to the celestial? Um, um, like I, I don't, I don't. I, all I know is that that is God's plan. There, there is, there is reasons why it's God's plan. Is that, that is because He wants to bestow another one of His qualities upon the people who have already accepted His divine love. Okay. And so, what He wants to do is all of those people are in that uh, one minute in that soul union state in the 22nd sphere, he wants to bestow new qualities upon them. And the ones who have rejected the divine love through this process uh, will be given time to, to come to their senses, I suppose you could call it, where they'll be given time to live in the six sphere state, um, which is a happy state, by the way, but to feel some feelings of dissatisfaction about not receiving the divine love. And then he'll probably reopen the divine love uh, process again. So it was sort of like ebb and flow from God, depending on people's rejection or acceptance. So my, my feelings are that people, it'll get to a stage on the earth and in the spirit world where people clearly know what the divine love is and still reject it. Mm. And, and under those circumstances, because of self-reliance, and under those circumstances, um, God will then withdraw the opportunity for divine love for, from, for, a, for, for those, a period of time. Oh, okay. Mm. For those that have rejected yeah, oh, okay. for those that have rejected it, because those that have accepted it can never not, <coughs> never not get it. You know, once you've mm -hmm. once you've even received a little bit of divine love in your soul, you're never now not going to. It's never going to be taken from you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll continue to progress anyway. Yeah. It would be best to get on the next train. <laughs> yeah, well, there are going to be other trains, obviously, <laughs> right? Yeah. But uh, it just depends on how long you want to wait, and uh, and why why wait. Like, what's the point in waiting, really? It's just an exercise in self-realisation rather than God-realisation. And in the end, it's an exercise in futility. Mm. Um, and this is a trouble with all self, you know, all self-reliance, is that it's just futile in the end. Mm. Yeah. You, you mentioned how you set up various processes for yourself to go through in this lifetime. So, do we really have free will? I mean, you talk about free will quite a lot, but do we really? Well, my, yeah, I set up all those things in my life, yeah. So I set them up, so it's my will. In the case, in the first incarnation, in the first incarnation, everything is happening based on your will. Right? So, so everything... Sorry? It doesn't feel like that. No, but um, the, the, I must clarify it probably. The initial incarnation process and the damage you receive at the soul level because of the parents happens because of their will. Right? And, and that's where a lot of our feelings of well, I don't have free will come from. Because we, our will has been imposed upon by others, in particular our parents' emotional denial. Now, the truth is we all have the will to be able to experience that and change that. So we all have the ability to do that. But it, it, it is a sad fact that self-reliance has created this, this multi-generational process of sin or the multi-generational process of passing down emotional injuries. And, and that's what it, why it feels like we don't have free will at times. Because yeah. other people have affected our will in many cases. But we do have free will. And once you're one with God, you recognise just how powerful it is. But at the start, you sort of feel like, I don't have free will, my life's a mess and I can't get out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's how it feels a lot. Well, it doesn't feel like that to me, but it feels, okay. it feels like it doesn't matter what I do, there's a path there and there are steps there and it's just a matter of taking that. So, and the pain comes when you sort of resist that or whatever. Well, 
You, yeah, it's probably best to say that we have free will in, inside of the laws of God. See, God, God didn't create an anarchist universe. He created a law-abiding universe. And so everything that happens inside, everything that happens in, in, the, in the universe happens inside of the laws of God. And man is the only creature, man's soul, is the only creature that's able to break those laws using his will. So that's what free will gives you the ability to do, to break those laws. Now, the problem is that many of us have broken the laws without even knowing we've broken anything. And so we have pain because we, don't, we didn't even know that we broke the law. But all that came from people wanting to walk away from God in the first place. So you will find that in the end that uh, you have complete expression of free will inside of the boundaries of the laws of God. And that's, and in the end, you won't even want to break any of the laws of God. Uh, and you can still have complete expression of your personality inside of that. In fact, you will have the best complete expression of your personality when you do that. But um, in terms of your having free will, sooner or later, the, the may becomes a must. Do you understand what I mean by that? If you want to connect to God, you must do it God's way. You're not going to be able to do it your way. God created a way. So that's like being in the flow of the Tao. Okay. Uh, well, like yeah. Not really, no. The flow of the Tao is more about a, the Kundalini energy and receiving all that. And it's, it, there, there are lots of terminologies that have been created through the experience of different Eastern philosophies that, that all refer to being in a state of perfect natural love. In the end. And that's not the same as receiving divine love. What about trusting the divine? Um, yeah, again... You're certainly going to need to trust in the divine. In fact, once you trust completely, then you, you will also be at one with God. Um, the, the issue becomes all what emotions within us cause us to not trust. So that, that's always the issue that we need to, to look at. So, so while it's good to say, oh, I'm trying to trust God, I'm trying to trust God, we have to also be honest. Do I really trust God right now? Do I really? Do I really trust God completely right now? For most of us, the answer would have to be no, we don't. Uh, why? Because there's an emotion within me that says, I can't really trust God, I've got to look after myself. Or, you know, God says I've got to, you know, if I don't, if I do it God's way, then something might, bad might happen, so I've got to do it my way. Or there's all these, like I said yesterday, the issue of self-reliance is the biggest single emotional issue you will face. Because it's the most long-standing one in the human race, passed down generationally. As I'm sitting here and I'm asking... Do I feel love? And I'm aware that I don't. It could, it shows up, and then I get tickled because it shows up so quickly. If it doesn't show up quickly, that's because I've hit a block, isn't it? Yeah. And sometimes, though, as I bring my awareness into the block, I can still feel love. Yes. So I'm not sure if I'm. As soon as you switch awareness into your block and, and experience, start experiencing your block, from that moment on, if you've got a longing for love, you will receive it while you're even feeling the block. Okay. Okay. See, this is the beauty of truth. The instant, the instant that you allow your emotion, you don't have to have completed it. All you need to do is allow it. Right. So, I, I, you don't have to not grieve to in order to receive God's love. Like, in other words, you don't have to cry now and then after you finish crying, receive God's love. <laughs> You can actually receive God's love while you're crying. God can give you love then because your emotions are flowing then. Right? And therefore there is no blockages. There's no blockages in you. It's when you shut that down, now you can't receive divine love because you're shutting down your own emotions and God's love is an emotion. It's actually coming in most cases that's being transmitted is the love from a spirit. And the same principles apply, by the way, to a love from a spirit as a love from God. And that is, a spirit can't give you their love if you're blocking your own. A spirit can't give you their love if you're blocking your own emotion. I can't give you my love if you're blocking your own emotion. You won't receive it at all. I'm trying to give my soulmate love, which is probably an error, it's an error on my part, and she don't want it. But, so, so she's not going to experience my love while she's blocking my emotion and blocking her emotion. So what, what you're saying is, if, if, 
I'm saying there's two aspects. There's the emotional aspect, which is stay open emotionally all the time. That's the only way you're going to receive love from anyone, spirit or God or another person. Stay open emotionally all the How time. How do we know if it's from spirit or God? It doesn't matter if it's love, does it? Really? Don't you just want to have love in your life? It doesn't really matter, does it? Love. Well, when you're longing for divine love from the heart, you're going to receive divine love. If you long for a love from a spirit, all of you have got guides, and you can love for, long for love from a guide, from your guide, they'll give you their love. Does their love come through the crown too? No, usually through the rear. So there's a little way yeah. we can differentiate. Yeah. If you feel the plug. Yeah, but in the end, you, the love will get so intense that you won't even notice where it's coming, how yeah. it's coming in. Yeah. So yeah, it's sometimes difficult to tell. But, but yeah, initially you might notice the, the crown chakra is the opening to God generally. But a lot of people describe the Kundalini energy as this tingling sensation entering them. And it's a totally different energy. So a lot of God's energies enter us via the crown chakra, not just the divine one. And remember, it's not the crown chakra that matters, it's the soul. And the soul is actually encompassing, it's, it's outside of, it's bigger than your bodies. Right? And it's your soul that's receiving the divine love, not anything else. The physical bodies have no part of it, because if they did, then no spirit could receive divine love, right? So the physical body has nothing to do with you receiving divine love. Otherwise the spirit couldn't receive the moment. Alright, now, have I explained enough what's going on, do you feel, with the oneness movement itself? And what I'm hoping to do in time and uh, is, is to actually discuss these principles with, at some point, the people who are leading the oneness movement in the spirit world. I've got, I've got to talk to the second layer <laughs> of the spirits in the oneness movement in the spirit world. The, the people who are the leaders don't want to talk to me at this point. <coughs> so at the moment, uh, their feelings at the moment in the spirit world are that, that they'll have to deconstruct what they've done and they don't want to undo what they've done. And my feelings are not that at all. I feel that uh, the two things can be combined very easily. And all of the principles of emotional clearing and there's a lot of other principles that are very important parts of receiving divine love as well as natural love. And so, you know, everything could be combined very easily. But the two spirits uh, who we, re you know, I really need to get to talk to in the spirit world are still resistive to that discussion. So I'm hopeful that in time that will change. And when that does change, you'll notice the change on earth in the movement because it is a heavy influence from them. What's the first level that you said you got through? I got through to some, there was a group of 2,000 fifth sphere spirits who, um, who um, were willing to talk to me about the, the uh, oneness movement on earth and what they were doing. They are aware, um, people who have had the golden bowl, sens bowl sensation enter them, they know that it's a spirit, not, not the person, but the spirits obviously know that it's one of them that's doing it. And there's literally uh, hundreds of thousands of spirits now in the spirit world who are, who are there at call at every meeting mm -hmm. of, of the oneness movement, mm -hmm. uh, waiting to go in, uh, be allowed by the person's desire to go into the person. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So the, the balls of light that show up in the photos, yep. are they actually spirits? They're spirits, yeah. They're everywhere though, yep. not just around India. I've seen so many examples. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying... Not just saying here. Oh yeah. yeah. Took some mm -hmm. photos recently. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Even at Peter's Alpha Dynamic courses, they're there at the. Of end course. We have all this so they're at stuff, every yeah. single meeting of every single type of thing that you can think of. Mm -hmm. Every single religious meeting, every single, like every that these spirits are there waiting. They're really showing up a lot lately, though, aren't they? Because it seems a relatively new phenomenon that they're appearing in photographs. So yeah, because all of them are aware of the huge changes that are starting to happen on the earth now, and they're all, many of them are wanting to assist, of course. Mm -hmm. And they're all aware, too, of, you know, the return of 14 from the, from the um, 22nd sphere as well. All the ones in the celestial realms are aware of that. Mm -hmm. And many of the ones in the other realms are aware of that. Even ones in the hells are aware of that. Mm -hmm. And I've had some bad experiences with them because of it as well. But... Um, so there's a, there's a whole range of spirits who are totally aware now. And so there's a lot of spirit activity at the moment on Earth as a result of that. AJ, they're having seminars in America around these orbs. They're calling them orb seminars. And 
and they're taking all kinds of pictures. And is that also because of the digital capacity? It's a fast camera, so they can they can pick them up more. That they've always been there. Yeah, the orbs have always been there, but there isn't a high. There is a much more intense uh, feeling in the spirit world of interest of what's going on on the okay. earth at the moment, for a lot of different reasons. And many, you know, they're all aware of major changes occurring around 2012, for example. They're all aware of the return of, of Jesus and, and, and others, uh, the return of 14. They've been aware for nearly 14 years about that. So, so there's a lot of awareness now in the spirit world that, um, you know, that is causing a higher degree of interest. And there is also a higher degree of interest of people on earth as well as a result. And so uh, that's generating a lot more interest in the spirit world as well. So it's this, it's a rapidly growing phenomenon. It's all over the internet. There's pictures everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. could these be lower level entities? Any spirit that's above the first sphere uh, will present themselves as a light to you. And even groups of spirits in the first sphere can. When I say groups, it, like you can have like fifty thousand spirits in the first sphere. They can create a body and and actually inhabit their body for a short period of time and cause damage. So um, it just depends on whether they're cooperating with each other and most people in the first sphere don't feel like cooperating with anybody else. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's all sorts of spirit influences going so on. The yeah. friend took a picture of me and there were these spheres all over me. Mm -hmm. and I, I would like to think that's a good thing, but it could, from what you're saying, they could just be entities. Um, they, when you say entities, they are all people. Uh, they, when, every single orb is a person. Right? Mm. Is a person who lived on earth. And, uh, and they're in different spiritual conditions. The key is where you've been led to. So if you're all being led down to the pub every, uh, every night to get yourself drunk... I'm following an orb. You're following a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but the spirit doesn't have a good intention. Right? If you're getting led to spiritual discussion about truth and love and, and growth, then obviously the spirits with you have good intentions and are leading you down that path. Right? So, you know, just allow yourself to trust what's going on in your life rather than becoming fearful of it. Because yeah. it's all the law of attraction. It's all the law of attraction at work. Could you clarify when, when we give the blessing, does a spirit actually enter the person we're giving the blessing to or does just their love pour through you? It depends on the person themselves and how mediumistic they are and what their desire is. If their desire is open for the spirit to enter them, then the spirit will enter them. And how long would that spirit stay there? As long as the spirit can maintain the energy without harming the person. Oh. So, you know, it might last an hour, it might last a day. Um, you know, I've seen some cases where uh, certain people that are used to spirit possession have lasted two, three, four weeks or whatever. And when the spirit's in that person, they feel a heightened state? Yes, and not always a good heightened state. It depends what spirit sent them. Okay. So many people who've experienced, say, manic depression, for example, often have some very low-level spirit sent to them at that state, and, uh, and they maintain their manic phase for three, four weeks or whatever until they lose that energetic connection, and then the pe person just collapses in exhaustion. Mm. And that's a spirit possession of, of lower level spirits. Um, the higher the spirit, the more danger there is of damaging your physical form. So, because the energy they're actually transmitting is much more powerful than the energy you're capable of receiving if you're not in the same vibration of love. So, um, they have to be very careful as to how long they do it without harming you. This is why many mediums get exhausted. Who have been to mediums and they say, oh, I'm too tired now, I can't do it anymore. The reason why is because their, their level of development emotionally is not great enough to handle the constant communication with the spirits they're communicating with. Mm. Can actually the, the one that's blessing the energy, and can it do any damage to the brain, or the nervous system? All, all of the spirits involved in the oneness blessing are all interested in love. So none of them would be interested in damaging the physical body. Right? It's only the ones that masquerade that are interested in damaging the physical body. So this is where I'm talking about ones who maybe you know, are taking sexual energy, for example. Then they will certainly damage the body in that process. So the key is for you to be sensitive 
And obviously as givers, you all have the intention of doing it out of love so that it doesn't affect you so much. But if you're receiving it from somebody that you don't know, um, if you feel an uncomfortable feeling, right? so rather than feelings of love or care for you, if you're feeling, you know, feeling sexually violated, for example, which is a common one, um, then you know, just discontinue it straight away and, and tell the person that they're actually violating you sexually. And that you're not impressed, <laughs> and uh, and then work out, you know, let yourself work emotionally through the reason why you attracted that, because you attracted it because of the emotion inside of yourself. So um, yeah, so it just depends. You be sensitive to the energy of people. If people are in a state of love and truth, that's a good sign generally um, that they are in a better condition than if they're in a state of wanting to harm you in any way. And so yeah. Sorry, Ajay, what was change in awareness we have now, mm -hmm. would automatically divine spirits come through us? As, yes, as soon as, as soon as you long for divine love, you are automatically usually assigned a divine love guide, a guide that's on the divine love path, if you haven't got one already. The majority of you have one already. The reason why is because you, a lot of you wouldn't even be here if you didn't have one. Right? Um, there are some who, who were invited that aren't here, and many of them have got natural love spirits still very much connected with them. Right? Now, the, the issue then becomes, well, what's, what is a divine love spirit going to do? Well, what they're going to do, they still want to give love, and they still want to give healing to people. But they want to do it based on the person's true heartfelt desire, not based on what they say they want. Whereas a, whereas a natural love spirit will do it based on what they say they think they want. Whereas a divine love spirit always feels the soul before they act. You follow me? So a divine love spirit can certainly help you use your, use your energy, connect with you, and help you help, help heal and help other people. But they won't do it without addressing the soul issues. So if you can bear that in mind, that's what will happen. And there's no harm in you connecting with a natural love spirit and them doing it if that's what the person desires. And the question you've got to ask yourself, is that what you desire? Mm -hmm. So that's up to you, what you desire. Mm. Do you have to have um, the experience of divine love before you get the guide? Or can you get the divine love guide even if you haven't had the experience of divine love? It's not so much the having of the experience of divine love that you get assigned the guide. The guide is assigned based on your desire for complete truth and desire for divine truth. So many of you would have a guide even if you haven't received divine love that is on the divine love path because you've had a desire for God's truth in your heart. And the assignment is done according to the law of attraction? Uh, God actually does the assignment. God actually assigns uh, personally these guides mm -hmm. um, and the way he does that is by, by actually motivating the heart of the particular person to connect with you uh, so the spirit in the spirit world, in the celestial spheres, uh, is motivated to find you and connect with you because that spirit, God feels that spirit is the best person to help you. And the, re the reason why you feel that that spirit is the best person to help you is because your personalities and your, and your experiences on earth are very, very similar. Sometimes you'll be assigned a lot more than one guide because you might have four or five different experiences that are very unique to you and there might be four or five different spirits in the spirit world who need to connect with you to help you emotionally through those experiences. So this is another example of how much God cares, cares for us. Yeah. yeah, 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 his constant care for you. Can the guides be at like two phases at once kind of thing? Um, our, your guides certainly can and particularly the higher the guide the more possibility that is going to be. So if you've got a celestial spirit guide, for example, a celestial spirit is capable of transmitting uh, energy and emotions, and in particular emotions and thoughts, to you and remaining where they are at the, t at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they are totally ca capable of that connection. And the higher the connection, and there are ones in the one state, so where they are combined soul, those ones that are combined soul are capable of doing that to thousands of people at the same time. So, yeah. Like having a big brother. Yeah, and that's how most, that's how millions of people receive the energy from me at the same time. When you give in the blessing, how many spirits are sending their love, and what levels? And, or is it only just one that comes? You know? 
It depends on uh, how many spirits um, are connected at the time. What, what actually happens is, is for many of them is like a, a group of, say, six, a six-sphere spirit is capable of the transmission of far more natural love than a four-sphere spirit. There are literally tens of thousands of four-sphere spirits involved in the oneness movement. So when a four-sphere spirit transmits that love um, through, through you, they, you know, obviously there might be four or five or ten of them together doing it to give that same intensity if that's what they're trying to cooperate with. So it just depends on the situation and the circumstance. It will be different every single time. Yeah. Mm. And it depends on the longing of the individual too. Yeah. Some people will have a longing for divine love in their heart that you put, that you put your hands on and, and want to give the oneness blessing to. And those ones, a uh, natural love spirits probably won't even connect to and that they'll know and, and divine love spirits will connect to them and help them open up so to receive some of that love. Yeah. So it just depends totally on Mm. on what you know the actual desire of the individual you're giving the blessing to really is and you don't know that desire necessarily <coughs> but the spirits can see that desire much more easily but that's the soul's desire not so if you had an intellectual discussion with them but still not getting there no you having an inter you you will find in time that having an intellectual discussion with anybody is almost fruitless mm. <laughs> yeah um, there, there are some good things that can be accomplished if it, if it opens their heart, mm -hmm. it can, it, you can accomplish good things. But if a person doesn't want to open their heart, it's very hard to get anywhere with them emotionally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know that already from your own experience in your own life, right? How many of you have been in a relationship where the guy just doesn't want to open up or the girl just doesn't want to open up to you emotionally and it's just like... Whatever you do, it just doesn't work, does it? It's like, and that's what it's like with us as individuals too. So we need to just bear in mind that it's the desire of the individual that drives it. So be sensitive to people who are emotional because they, they have a stronger desire also. They will have a strong desire to receive love from spirits or from God right? and from you. And so if the blessing giver um, is coming from a natural love point of view, and the recipient is divine love. Mm -hmm. Will a, a divine love being come through the, the giver, even if they're just in the natural? It's unlikely because the natural love, the, the person on the natural love path is the blessing giver, is not capable of transmitting the emotional intensity that a divine love spirit would be able to transmit. And in fact, that the person themselves would be able to receive. It would be better reversing the role of the blessing giver sitting down and the person who's received my love actually give them the blessing. Mm. Is it possible to give a oneness blessing? Uh, I'm asking this question because I feel a little hesitant about giving the blessing anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to understand more about why I feel that way. I feel some concerns about spirits coming through me. Right. Can you. So help you're afraid me? of spirits coming through you? Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about whether I'm doing the best thing for the person I'm giving the blessing to. Right. Well, that's a ma that is a concern. The key, the key thing is respecting the free will of the individual. Now, now if, if a spirit is going to overcloak the individual, so in other words, possess the individual, then, and, and that happens without the, free, the person knowing that it's actually going on, but they're thinking that that... And the issue is not so much that the per that that happens, but that, that they think that's God. Yes, that's the issue. So how do we right. prevent that? Or well, you don't need to prevent it. All you right. need to say, well, you know, what just entered you was a spirit who's on the natural love path, right. who wants to give you their love and wants to show you what their love feels like. So it's, it sounds like to me like we before we give the blessing to people, we need to explain and give them a hand out about what the blessing actually is and what can happen. So that they're informed. My, my suggestion is do the blessing, just do it. Just do it. While people, and then notice the response of the person. And, have, and trust the feeling you have inside of yourself. If you feel that they're blocking that love from flowing, then say that to the person. If you feel that, that a spirit just entered them, that was a natural love spirit, just sit down with them and say, oh, you're feeling really good now, aren't you? And the reason why is this. This is what happened. Just trust your intuition that you, know, you can explain these things to the people who are me. Right? Just, just explain it to them then. Don't, don't do it all at the start, because at the start what will often happen is it will just scare them silly. Right? <laughs> right? And, then, 
And in the end, what's that do? It just creates yeah. more fear on the earth. And what's more fear on the earth going to do? Mm. Create more damage and more damage to them. And mm. So that's pointless. They're there to receive something. So they're open. They've mm. come at it in an open condition. Keep them in the open condition, but then explain to them what's going on if you feel something has gone on. Even if something untoward's gone on, just, you know, if some blessing giver has come along and you've noticed the lady or man respond like, ooh, then you can say, oh, what's happened there? You know, that he's taken something from her. What's going on there? And go up there and say something about it. Yeah. So just say the truth. Um, I was taught to give an intent or state the intention um, before the blessing process begins. So having heard this today, what I was um, thinking was to set the intent that they receive the divine love. And I mean, the rest is up to them, but I felt that if I would give a blessing, I can't set the intent for you to receive divine love. One thing I can do, though, is set the intent or or pray to God, long to God, that you'll be you be you you get to a state of openness with yeah. that, and that I can help you with that. Yeah. Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. Do that all the time. That would be my suggestion. Yeah. And understand, understand too that some of the experiences particularly if they're metaphysical experiences. And do you understand what I mean by that? They're experiences like out-of-body experiences or you know, where people feel transformed overnight or all of those kind of metaphysical experiences. All of those experiences are the result of natural love. Understand that. The experiences that are a result of divine love are always going to be emotional. Soul to soul. Understand that. And you'll know when there's a difference, when you give the blessing to somebody. You'll see the difference. You'll see the reactions in people. Take notice of those that, are, that can feel that love and talk to them about the divine love and how they can do that for themselves. And you know, Take notice of that with them. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's been beneficial for everyone. It's been fantastic. And, uh, and I know some of you came with a fair bit of reticence. I could feel that this morning. And... Uh, and so I hope that it's been a, a bit different than what you expected. And, uh, and, and thank you for all taking responsibility for many of your emotions, like you've been doing. So it's, it's really good. Is there anything after one, two, three, four? No, not really. Well, well, yes, obviously there's a lot more. You know, the, this was if I'm not feeling the feeling, then owning the fact that I don't want to, and asking myself why. Once I start asking myself why, I'll start connecting with things emotionally, and that's a whole different <laughs> list of you know feeling. But in the end, you will not once you release blocks, you will not need to know how to experience the emotion because you become just like a child who just feels it as it comes. So you won't need to be told it how to do it. The the desire in our mind to be told how to do it all the time is in fact an intellectual blockage that we have to experience our emotions. Right. Also, analyzing Yeah, our desire to analyze. You stop analyzing, you just feel. It. Just feel, yeah, yeah. Now, initially, that's difficult because we're so used to analyzing everything. So it's very, very difficult. But if you can allow yourself to, to not do that, it would be yeah, really good to not analyze. To not, to not analyze and just rather to feel. So the, the, key is, the key is use your mind as a tool to connect you to your feelings rather than using your mind as a tool to avoid your emotion. Mm. That's always the answer. Go. Go. Thank you very much. No worries, my pleasure. Thank you for all of your attention. Thank you. Thank you.